I'm going to show you how to make Creative Kiwi's large scalloped placemat and for that I'm going to be using a 4x4 four four hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping, I've got my squizzers, mask and tape, matching bobbin and thread and I'm only using one colour thread throughout, I've got my batting and my fabrics, I'm using jelly roll and uh, for the backing I'm going to be using some um, charm squares and I will cut those off um, as I make them so that I've got minimal waste on my fabrics. Underneath this video there's lots of information and links for you. Um, there's links to the products that I use and also um, to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group, their mentorship program and also um, there's a um, link to SimThreads shop along with a 5% discount code that you can use as many times as you want and that code will last until the 8th of February next year so enjoy it. Start off by hooping your first two layers of uh, wash away stabiliser and I like to pin around the top edge of my hoop so that my stabiliser stays nice and taut so take your pin lay it on top of your hoop push it through and then bring it back round and back through your stabiliser again and that will anchor it load file A into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your batting placement outline I'm going to place my fabric over the back and tape it in place Place your batting over the outline and then you're going to tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. I like to trim up my excess batting at this stage. You can leave it until you trim up the um, excess fabric as well if you wish, it doesn't matter, I just find it easier doing it this way. I'm now going to place my first front fabric over this area here and tape it in place. You can now pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. So now we're going to trim up along this stitch line here. And then we're going to add our second fabric here. Tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four. Trim up along these edges. And then you're going to place your third fabric over here. And tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five. Trim up the edge here. You're now going to pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag along these two raw edges.
change your thread to whichever colour you want for the quilting and next you're going to stitch round number seven and that's going to quilt this area here. You're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to quilt this area here. And round number nine for this area here. If you haven't added your back already, turn your hoop over and place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Then you're going to stitch round number 10 to secure it. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric from both front and back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over. You can now pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number 11 and that's going to do all the satin stitch along these joins and around the edge. We're now going to free this from the hoop. And we're now going to trim up as close as we can possibly can to the stitch line here because this is going to be our join and along here and here. And that's our first quarter completed. Load file B into your machine and then you're going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as you did before. Load your hoop into your machine then stitch round number one for your placement outline. I'm going to put my um, backing on so I'm going to turn my hoop over, place it over the outline and then tape it in place. Then pop your batting on and tape it down. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim up your excess batting Place your first fabric over this area and tape it in place Pop it into your machine and stitch round number 3 to secure it Trim away the excess from along this stitch line here. Place your second fabric over here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four. Trim away the excess fabric from each side of the stitch line. Place your third fabric over the remaining 
area and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch around number 5 to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from along this stitch line here. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 6 and that's going to zigzag the two raw edges. Load your thread colour for your uh, quilting into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 7 and that's going to quilt this area here. Next is round number 8 and that's going to quilt this area here. And round number 9 is going to quilt this area here. If you haven't added your back already, turn your hoop over and place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Then you're going to stitch round number 10 to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of your hoop, starting with the back. We're now going to join the previous segment to this one. So you want to line this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here. And then we're going to pin it in place. Now you want to keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line because you don't want your um, needle catching it. I'm going to put a little bit of tape down as well, just to hold that nice and flat. We're then going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 11. And that's going to zigzag along this line here. If you're happy with your join, you can now stitch round number 12. And that's going to do all the satin stitching around the edge and along the joins. You're now going to free your work from the hoop, so turn your hoop over. Now we just need to trim up along here again. And that's our second segment completed. We're going to stay with file B and you're going to hoop and pin your uh, stabiliser once more. Then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your batting placement outline. Turn your hoop over, place your backing fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Place your batting over the front, tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them. Trim away the excess batting.
place your fabric over this area here and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it trim away the excess uh, fabric from along this stitch line Place your second fabric over this area here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from both sides. Place your third fabric over this area and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five. Trim away the excess fabric from along here. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag along these two joins. Load whichever colour you want for the quilting into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number seven and that's going to quilt this area here. Next you're going to stitch round number 8 and that's going to quilt this area here. Next is round number 9 and that's going to quilt this area here. If you haven't done so already you're now going to add your backing fabric and tape it in place and then you're going to stitch round number 10 to secure it. If you've already added your backing, you can skip this colour. Trim up your excess fabric from both front and back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over. We're now going to join our previous piece to this one so you're going to line this stitch line up here on top of this stitch line here and then you're going to pin it in place or tape it it's up to you make sure that your pins are right out of the way of the stitch line so put them right hard up against your hoop I'm also going to put a little bit of tape down just here and here to hold these corners flat. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 11 and that's going to zigzag these along this join to join them. If you haven't got one already in your machine load a matching bobbin and thread and then you're going to stitch round number 12 and that's going to do the zigzagging and satin stitch all around the edge and over the drawings. You're now going to free this from the hoop, so turn your hoop over. And that's your third segment completed.
load file C into your machine and then you're going to hoop and pin your wash away stabilizer as you did before and then you're going to stitch round number one to give you your placement outline. If you're adding the backing now then turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Turn your hoop back, place your batting over the front and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them. Trim away the excess batting. Place your fabric for this area here over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from along the stitch line. Place your fabric for this area here over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number four. Trim away the excess from both sides of this fabric. Place your third fabric over here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five. Trim away the excess fabric from this side. Pop your hoop back into your machine and you're going to stitch round number six and that's going to do the zigzagging across these two joins. Round number seven is going to stitch the quilting in this area here. So change your uh, bobbin and thread to whichever color you want for that and then stitch round number seven. Next is round number eight and that's going to quilt this area here. And now round number nine and that's going to quilt this area here. If you haven't added your back already, turn your hoop over and place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place then you're going to stitch round number 10 to secure it i've already done mine so i'm now going to trim up the excess fabric both back and front and you will do exactly the same after you've added your backing if you haven't done so already turn your hip over Before we go any further, I didn't trim up around the edge here last time uh, when I finished that, so I'm just going to trim it up now. 
It's going to be rather difficult to do once we add the last part, uh, piece on. We're now going to join these two pieces to here and it's going to be st stitched separately but I'm going to put them in place both at once. So you're going to match this stitch line here and you're going to overlap it onto this stitch line here and pin it in place. Don't forget to keep your pins right out of the way of your stitch line. You're going to do the same with this one, this stitch line here sitting on top of this one here. I'm going to add a little bit of tape just to hold the corners down. Pop your hoop into your machine and you're now going to stitch round number 11 and that's going to zigzag along this join here. If you're happy with your join you're now going to stitch round number 12 and that's going to run up to this corner and then zigzag around to here. And you're now going to stitch round number 13 and that's going to zigzag along this join here. If you're happy with your joins you're now going to stitch round number 14 and that's going to do the satin stitching so make sure you've got your matching bobbin and thread in your machine. You can now free your work from your hoop so turn your hoop over And that's your fourth segment completed. Load file D into your machine and this is going to be for the centre and then you're going to pit, hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as before. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one for the placement outline. Okay, we've come to a stage where you need to make some choices. So if you're going to be adding um, a design in the center of your placemat, you're not going to put the backing on just yet. You're going to be doing that after you've stitched it. If you're going to be adding um, your backing now, then you can turn your hoop over and position it and tape it in place. Now I'm going to do mine slightly different to the instructions and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, the instructions say to place your batting down and your fabric on top, tape it and stitch around number two. I'm not doing it quite like that. I'm going to place my batting down and tape it. I'm going to stitch round number two. Then I'm going to trim up the excess batting, place my fabric over the top, and then I'm going to stitch round number two again. I just prefer doing it this way. I feel it gives a nice, neat, trimmed edge. So when you've placed your batting and taped it in place and you're backing if you're putting it on, load your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two. So I'm now going to trim up my excess batting.
I'm going to place my fabric over the top, tape it in place and stitch round number two again. Load your thread for the quilting into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number three and that's going to quilt all the centre of your placemat. If you're adding your own design to the centre of your um, placemat, now is the time to stitch it. To do that, if you haven't done this before, you would come out of this design, load the design that you want to put in the middle, stitch it, make sure that it's for a 4x4 four four though, otherwise it's not going to fit, or whatever hoop size that you're um, stitching, because I'm, I'm using a 4x4, four four, which is why I said a 4x4. Four four. Then you come out of that and pick up where you left off here with um, adding your backing. So after you've added your backing, you will you'll, um, put it onto the back of your hoop as you did before, lay it over, tape it down, and then you will stitch um, round number four to secure it. After you've done that, then you're going to trim away your excess um, fabric from both the front and back of your hoop, which is what I'm going to do now. So turn your hoop over and trim away. We're now going to add our um, frame, if you like, because that's what it is. It frames the centre, doesn't it? Um, and to do this, uh, I pin mine on. I start with the corners and I want to make sure that this stitch line around the edge here is overlapping on this stitch round, this stitch line, sorry, around the edge here. So position it in one corner one on top of the other and once again we're going to make sure that the pins are kept right out of the way of the hoop so pin as close to the hoop as you possibly can rather than knee or where you're going to be stitching then I'm going to go to the opposite corner and do the same there And the next corner. Now, whenever you free anything from the hoop, it relaxes a little bit, so you might need to tug on it a little just to make it line up. And the same for this corner. And then I'm just going to put some pins here just to make sure that these, this line here is sitting on top of the one underneath and so that it doesn't move. And the same on the other sides. Okay, we're now going to pop that into our machine and stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag around this first half. We're going to check it, make sure that it's all nicely lined up before stitching the other half. You want to make sure that your machine is on slow for this. I've slowed my machine right down. I 
I've had a quick look and I'm happy with that so I'm now going to stitch round number six and that's going to travel all the way back round and up to the top here. Now round number seven and that's going to zigzag the other half. As you can see that's all zigzagged now and there's no fabric or anything sticking out this side of the um, the zigzag line so there's nothing to trim off there. Load your matching bobbin and thread into your machine for the satin stitching and then you're going to stitch round number eight and that's going to complete the satin stitching around the centre. So that's all the stitching done. We can now free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over. Now all that remains is to get rid of all the excess uh, stabiliser with some warm water and a cotton bud. Dip your cotton bud in the warm water and I'm going to start off with the back where we've just uh, removed it from the hoop. And then just wipe it along the edge. And that's our scalloped placemat finished. Hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. Please stay safe. Mm -hmm.